All right, so welcome back to the Toys Go Out. And sorry that you don't want to see me on the screen right now, but I am trying to record this upstairs instead of my basement classroom. I don't want you to see my children running by. So where we left off, a dog, or a possible shark, they said, popped plastic. And she was a flat ball. And he starts to chew on her. And so now we're going to find out what happens because plastic is in trouble. And if you remember, so is Stingray. In the tub, Stingray is completely underwater. At the beach, a possible shark tooth pops plastic's rubber skin. In the tub, Stingray is soaked through her sawdust insides. At the beach, the air whizzes out of plastic until she is soft and squashy. Stingray tries to lift a flipper to help herself out, but the water makes her so heavy she can't move. The possible shark tries to swallow plastic. Stingray, help! Plastic, stop! Help, stop! But Tuck Tuck can't move, and the possible shark isn't listening. Plastic is stuck in the back of the possible shark's throat. Very uncomfortable. Whoa, 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 whoa. The possible shark chokes, coughs, chokes again, coughs, and spits plastic out onto a pile of seaweed. Plastic knows she has to get away fast, but what can she do? She's halfway deflated, very unbouncy. The possible shark licks, it ch licks its chops, but as it swoops in for another chomp, plastic turns her body so her puncture hole is pointing right at its face. Then she squeezes her rubbery skin together as tight as it will go, pushing her last bit of air out the puncture with a loud, farty noise. <sighs> the possible shark is confused. It pulls back. It makes a whimpering sound. Then it trots away with its tail between its legs. Yippee, thought Plastic. I can't stay here, though. It might come back and eat me later. The seaweed around her is gray-green and scraggly. There are clumps of it all over the beach, drifting in and out as the waves skim across the sand. Plastic checks to be sure no one is looking at her, then slips under a big piece. Rolling is hard with so little air inside, but she uses all her strength and moves gently forward and around until she is wrapped thoroughly in seaweed. Then she waits until she hears a big wave crash on the shore. As the ocean water rushes toward her, Plastic rolls along the edge of the water, pretending that the wave has caught this unsuspecting and surprisingly round blob of seaweed and merely happens to be pulling it along. With each crash of the breakers, Plastic rolls a bit further in the direction of the little girl and her family. Once a wave really does catch her and she bangs up hard against a big rock. Once a small crab waves a mean looking claw in her direction. And once a possible shark of a different nature, short legs with curly fur, sniffs her with frightening curiosity. With tremendous effort, Plastic keeps moving until she hears the little girl's voice. Then she slips out of her seaweed cover and bold face rolls back to the beach blanket as fast as she can possibly roll. Stingray is soaked through with cold water and so heavy she cannot move. From the bottom of the tub, she hears a sound. Warble glub glub glub. Fortunately, her eyes are on the top of her head, so she can see what's above her. Lumpy and the one-eared sheep are sitting on the edge of the tub. The rushing sound of the tap makes it impossible to make out what they're saying. And though she's glad to see them, Stingray can't think how they will rescue her since both of them are sinkers. After hating her friend all day, she wishes Plastic were here. It was mean to her, thinks Stingray, and now she's gone to the beach and might not ever return. I'm a sinker and a stinker too, and if I rot and drown and dissolve in this tub, it's probably better than I deserve. Warble global Stingray hears again, and then silence. Lumpy has turned off the tap. He has pulled up the plug by its chain and the water is running out. Stingray is humiliated. She almost wishes they hadn't found her. It's so embarrassing to be a soggy plush sinker fish and yet she's very glad they did. When the tub is empty, Lumpy and Sheep jump in and pull Stingray out. She is soaked through. They yank Tuck Tuck down from the rod and wrap Stingray in the towel and Lumpy jumps up and down on both of them to squeeze out as much of the water as possible. Then she, he and Sheep hang Tuck Tuck back up and help Stingray to a nice sunny spot by the window in the bedroom where she can dry herself the rest of the way. Stingray can barely mutter, thank you, but Lumpy and Sheep don't mind. The little girl's mommy has industrial strength tape and a bicycle pump. When the family gets home from the beach, she brings plastic down to the basement, tapes her puncture shut and pumps her full of air. 
Plastic is carried upstairs to the bedroom good as new, except for the small patch of clear tape covering the hole. She can sense it whenever she rolls, a slightly lumpy feeling, but she hopes no one else will notice. It is excellent to have her bounce back. It will be excellent to see Lumpy. It will be excellent to see the sheep. It will even be excellent to see Stingray, in spite of the mean things she said about hoping Plastic went to the beach and never came back. As soon as the girl's mommy puts her on the bedroom rug and heads back downstairs, Plastic starts singing a song she made up in the car on the way home. Oops, sorry guys. I'm a small ball, small ball, small ball, not a snowball, 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 not a meatball, 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 not an eyeball, eyeball, eyeball. But she stops after a while because nobody is listening. Lumpy sheep and the twin mice are all clustered around the rocking horse in the corner, discussing whether or not it would be safe to try to use a hairdryer on Stingray. Lumpy cries plastic, beach, beach, beach. How was it? Lumpy turns around. Yippee, cries Plastic. I floated and floated. Did you see fish? Sharks, says Plastic. With big long legs and waggly tails, they were running all over. Wow, Lumpy is impressed. Did the ocean go on forever? Forever and ever? Was it much bigger than the pond? A zillion times bigger? Then Plastic spots Stingray all damp on the windowsill. What happened, she whispers. She's so soggy. Lumpy explains about the tub. Oh, poor Stingray. Plastic remembers how it felt without her bounce, so she could hardly roll, and how she doesn't want anyone to know. She thinks about how Lumpy is not quite a real buffalo, and Stingray is not quite a real Stingray, but how she is a real ball and can do all the stuff that balls can do. She feels lucky. Did you know there's more than one kind of Stingray, wonders Plastic in a loud voice, loud enough for Stingray to hear all the way over by the window. I read it in an animal book, she lies. There are water stingrays and dry clean only stingrays. Dry clean only ones are bigger and stronger and much better looking and they live on land. And other animals look up to them because they know a lot of stuff. Which is, which kind is our stingray, I wonder? Dry clean only, says stingray in a small voice from the windowsill, feeling a tiny bit proud for the first time in a good while. It says so on my tag. Oh, I thought so, says Plastic, because you're awfully big, and you know so much. There is a pause. It's nice to have you home, says Stingray. Really, asks Plastic. Yes, says Stingray. It was very unbouncy here without you. All right, so tomorrow we'll start Chapter 5, How Lumpy Got on the Big High Bed and Lost Something Rather Good Looking. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.